So we're here at Fourth Quarter Towers again, and we're just moving on with the game. We looked at setup in the previous video, and now we're going to talk about the next step. So, Dr. K, what do you want to find out about now? So, how do I actually set up a player? Okay, so your format before you even set up your players in formation, you need to call some plays. And this is really what makes fourth quarter football unique because it has a deck building mechanic where you will be drawing plays from your play deck. Now, your play deck is a deck of cards with different American football plays all ready for your team. In the proper game, in the full game, you would have selected the cards that you want to use for this game. But there are some rules on setup. The number one being that you may only have one of each play in your deck. So let's see what we've got. At the start of the game, you would draw three cards. We're going to do this open. In the game itself, you would not do it open at all. You would be hiding these from your opponent. And we have three plays that have been called. Now, these three plays would then be what you could select for the actual play that you're going to run. But you don't use all three. You keep one of those in reserve. So in this case, we're going to keep our red run play in reserve for a later time. In the meantime, the other two plays, we have got uh, middle slants and we have got... Isolate. Them. Isolate. QB, sorry, QB left. Okay, so we're going to look at one of these uh, to start with. Let's look at the middle slants. Now, the middle slant has the grid, and it also has a quick diagram of the offensive line. Now, on the grid, they're showing that the flanker would get FL, would get plus two if he caught it uh, in that zone. And the SE, the split end, would get plus one in that. Now, we'll let, then it has other information about the play, but let's look at this on the game board. If I move back to here, and we pick up our flanker, and our flanker needs to go into this zone at some point during the play. If he does, then he will be getting a bonus. So anywhere in this situation. Anywhere in that zone. So he could be there, he could even end up on the far side of it. But he's got to be on that zone. Now, the split end is going the other way. He's crossing over, because this is a slant pattern that crosses in the somewhere. middle. Somewhere in that zone, exactly. So if he's catching it there, but he doesn't get so much of a bonus because this play is really designed to go to the flanker. He's like your second choice player. Now, when we actually roll to throw th this, there'll be a number of things that come in for the pass. There'll be all sorts of things, the number of defenders around, whether any defenders are covering the player, how good the quarterback is at throwing to that zone, and also how good the defenders are at defending that zone. On top of that, though, we like to uh, have players, r coaches, run the play as it's called. Because in real American football, the coach does not suddenly uh, just have players improvise all over the place. This is a disciplined sport. So we have a really important rule in fourth quarter football, which is the rule of minus three. If you do anything that isn't on that play card, if you start scrambling your quarterback around, or if one of your players tries to go to a different zone, then their role to uh, catch the ball will be at minus three. That significantly increases the chance of failure and increases the chance of a critical failure, a fumble, an interception. Now, the rule of three. Now, when Kara has... Uh, now, this play is middle slant. We've looked at where the two uh, receivers will go. In this case, the running back does not have a pattern on this, so he's just there for pass protection. Now, it says QB three-step drop. In this case, that means the quarterback is going to move back one square. That's his three-step drop. Usually, at some point, the running back will have already moved, and the quarterback will move back one square. If it said five-step drop, he would be dropping back a further square. That's usually reserved for those deeper passes when he's trying to hoof it downfield. Now, in the meantime, it also says that it's shoot first. Shoot first means that, is a special rule, that means on this play, the quarterback does not have much time to get rid of the ball. So, uh, in the second phase of movement, when the players are moving further, which we'll explain in another video, the quarterback must throw to one of the first two players that he moves. And he has to move those immediately and, and throw to them immediately. So he cannot wait for the play to develop. This is a play that's got to be immediately executed. 
Finally, it also says about formation or form. At the moment, it says any. Now, that means that later on, if you wish to expand your team, you could have other player positionals in this play, though they would still need a flanker or a split end to get the bonus. You wouldn't need both of them, but you definitely need one of them so that they could run this play. You might want to go with a slot back, or later on, if we develop a footback, fullback player, you might want to use him.